to Michelle for this kind introduction. In this webinar, we will present to you immune monitoring results from a case study that Immune Con Carta conducted on behalf of Mitzcago and that was published last year. The main objective of this immune monitoring work was to analyze cell-mediated immunity by flow cytometry using samples from subjects that received a candidate influenza VLP vaccine as part of a clinical trial sponsored by Mitzcago. <clears throat> the first section of this webinar will provide background information on influenza infections and current influenza vaccine limitations. The second section of this webinar will be given by Stéphane Pillet and will focus on an emerging and promising vaccine technology that Mitzcago has been pioneering for the last 10 years, virus-like particles as vaccines. Then we will present results and interpretation of the case study where vaccine-induced T-cell mediated immunity was investigated using clinical samples. I'd like to start off this webinar by mentioning that influenza is a significant and lethal virus that infects the respiratory tract. It affects millions of people worldwide annually. The annual economic impact of influenza infections is high and was estimated to be approximately 26 billion US dollars. This contributes to a reduction of the economic growth, a reduction that could be preventable at least by efficient prophylaxis. Influenza viruses are constantly evolving, principally through mutation and reassortment of imagglutinin and neuraminidase proteins in animals and birds. On some rare and unpredictable occasions, new influenza strains cross the species boundary. They jump from animal to human and can be even more devastating than seasonal infections, mainly because the general population has no pre-existing immunity to these viruses. A total of four well-documented influenza pandemics have occurred in the past century, the most deadly one being the Spanish flu in 1918, which led to, by the way, 50 million deaths worldwide, and the most recent one being the H1N1 swine flu pandemic that occurred in 2009. <clears throat> Seasonal influenza infection occurs annually and generally takes place during the fall or winter season. Strains that circulate in humans undergo mutation to evade the human immune system, a process known as antigenic drift. This is the main reason why influenza vaccines must be manufactured on a yearly basis. Given that influenza drifts through subtle mutation, some levels of pre-existing immunity persist in the population due to past exposures to previous seasonal viruses. Avian influenza circulates in the migratory birds, ducks, as well as domestic poultry, and these three species principally compose the natural reservoir of influenza viruses. It is in these species that new combinations of imagglutinin and neuraminidase genes are assembled to create novel influenza virus. On some rare occasion, avian influenza viruses cross the species boundary and jump straight in human or through an intermediate species like pig, where it can further adapt itself by reassortment of genes from multiple influenza strains. A pandemic occurs when novel influenza viruses in animals undergo genetic changes that allow the viruses to infect humans, who in turn transmit the new human-adapted virus to others, and so on. After a pandemic influenza, the virus tends to establish itself as a seasonal virus which circulates for several years in the human population. We inserted this slide to highlight the main differences between seasonal flu and pandemic flu. Main differences relate to the frequency of occurrence of influenza infections, which, as you know, is annual for seasonal flu, whereas pandemic flu is rare and occurs in an unpredictable manner. Also, the population that is at risk is quite different. Indeed, the young and elderly, as well as the immunocompromised patients, compose a risk group for seasonal influenza, whereas everyone is likely to be at risk for a pandemic influenza infection. Moreover, symptoms from pandemic flu are likely to be way more severe than those observed for seasonal influenza, 
And this is likely due to the fact that little to no pre-existing immunity exists in the human population to these viruses. Death tolls are likely also to be substantial during a pandemic. And the world economy will most probably suffer due to restrictions that will be placed on travel and commercial exchanges between countries. More importantly, and given the current technology employed to produce influenza vaccines, those vaccines will likely not be available in the early stage of the pandemic. Thus, high death, high death toll is likely. Now, the good thing, and as you are most probably aware of, is that substantial efforts are being done right now to improve influenza vaccines. The slide shown here represents the number and multiple types of influenza vaccines in relation to their clinical development stage. Several conclusions and interpretation can be made from this graph. First of all, there is a total of about 30 influenza vaccines approved in the world, which among which seven are licensed to be distributed in the U.S. Second of all, the vast majority of U.S. licensed vaccines rely on an egg-based production. Also note that the most clinically advanced influenza vaccines in development, those in phase three here, also rely on this technology in order to be produced.